We are living in a chaotic world, a world that some people say is on the brink of collapse. And there's a number of reasons for that. While I don't believe that it's on the brink of collapse, I do agree that we are living in a very chaotic world. I mean, despite all our technological advancements, our scientific advancements, we still have major, major problems. We have problems like poverty, inequality, injustice, exploitation, oppression. These things are still rife. They are still all over the world. And despite living in such a, an enlightened uh, period of time, uh, a time when information is so easy to spread around, when uh, a good word is so easy to spread and equally an evil word is so easy to spread, we still live with all of these problems. And the question is, why? What, what, is, the, what is the reason for this chaos? That's the one thing. And the second thing is, when we look at our technological advancements, rather than helping the situation, they sometimes make things worse. Because if you take technologies like artificial intelligence, you'll realize that these are causing more concern, consternation, uncertainty, doubt than anything else. So whichever way you look at it, with or without technological advancements, we are living in very uncertain, chaotic times. And the question is, what is the reason for this? And how do we solve this problem? Now, the reason for this is because of a serious lack of leadership. Now, whether you look at it on a, on a community level, you look at on a national level, international, business, corporate level, there's a severe lack of leadership. We have leaders today who are, we can, best way to describe them is weak. And it seems like there's just a shortage of good people. So what is, what is the way forward for this world? What is the way forward for the world to become a better place, to hum for humanity to reach that pinnacle that we should be aspiring to and we should, have been, we should have been at by now considering all the advancements that we made? The answer, in my opinion, is visionary leadership. What we need are visionary leaders. Now, what exactly is a visionary leader? A visionary leader is no ordinary leader. A visionary leader is a person who can take control, who can guide people, who can make sense of uncertainty. And there's no better time for a visionary leader, a person who looks at everything around him, who looks at everything that's emerging, who looks at trends, who looks at the past, he looks at where things are projected to go and he formulates a, a thought, he formulates an idea, a vision of what the future should be like, not will be like, what the future should be like. Because you see, visionary leaders are not people who ride the wave. Visionary people are the ones who not just prepare for the future, but they shape the future. So they look at what is, what is happening all around and they formulate a picture, a vision of what the world should be like and they work hard and they strive towards that. And this could be at any level. It could be at the level of a non-profit that is, for example, looking after the environment. It could be in the corporate sector, in the business world. It could be in the, in the political sphere, you name it. So visionary leaders are the ones who formulate a picture, a realistic picture, and who work towards it, and who guide people towards it, who says to people that this is where we need to go as human beings. This is what is required of us. This is what is required to bring out the best of our humanity, to bring out the best of us in, in, the, in our intellectual capacities. Now that is a visionary leader. And what this world needs right now are visionary leaders. But where do visionary leaders come from? And why is there a shortage of visionary leaders? I mean, you go into the corporate sector and I've got lots of corporate clients and when I, I speak to them, it's the same thing over and over again. The same problem that keeps emerging. We've got people with degrees and, dip, and, and, and masters and PhDs, but they just don't have vision. They cannot innovate. And you can't innovate if you don't have a vision, right? First things first, you can't be an entrepreneur if you don't have a vision. You can't be a leader if you don't have a vision. You cannot innovate without a vision because all of these things start 
at a vision. It starts at the seed level, and the seed is a vision, right? So every, every great leader of the past had some vision and worked towards that and sort of led people towards that. So we don't have visionary leaders. And the reason we don't have visionary leaders, controversial statement coming up here, because of you, 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 parents, because of parents, because of the lack of visionary parents. Now, who are visionary parents? Let me tell you. I like the term visionary parents, visionary parenting. I made that up. I made that up. Visionary parenting has two connotations, two meanings. One is, as a parent, you are a visionary. And the other is, you are parenting, verb, you are parenting a visionary. In other words, you are preparing a child who is going to grow up to be a visionary. So you yourself are a visionary, and you need to be, to bring up a child who is going to be a visionary. And that's the problem. We don't have visionary parenting and we don't have visionary parents. Instead, what we have are parents who are too busy playing catch-up to the, the established norm. And those who feel like they caught up are very comfortable with that established norm that we look around us, with the status quo. They think that their child is going to be adequately prepared for the world out of school by putting them through school and university. This is the thought. You think that school is preparing your child for the world out there. Do you think that school is preparing your child to be a visionary leader? Do you think that university is preparing your child to be a visionary leader? Whether you go to the cheapest school or the most expensive school, they are not preparing your child to be a visionary leader. And in doing so, they are hurting your child and they are hurting her prospects of the future. I'll tell you why. Because visionary leadership is not going to be optional in the future. It's going to be mandatory. Everybody in every space, in, on every level, is going to need to be a visionary leader. Why? Because, let me, let me explain this to you. Everybody is going to be an, a visionary leader in the future because of the uncertain times that we are living. There is no one on the planet today that can say, my job is secure. No one can say that because artificial intelligence is on a, on a rise. Let's take AI as just one agent of change. AI is taking jobs away. No doubt about it. It's causing disruption in the employment sector, no doubt about it. So everybody, no matter what your job is, you need to be ahead of time in your thinking and you need to be able to see in the next few months, in the next couple of years, how badly is AI going to affect my profession and how badly is it going to affect my job? You know what that is? That's called vision. We all have to be ahead of the, of the curve. We all have to be thinking ahead and thinking ahead is vision. So if you want to survive and thrive, you need to be constantly thinking ahead. It's not like the old days where you went to school, university, you got a job and you stayed with the same company till you retired. Sorry, there isn't just that loyalty anymore among companies. There just isn't and it's just business. I mean, if a company can replace a thousand human beings with one AI system, they are going to do it because it's good business. And if they don't do it, then the competition is going to do it. And the competition is going to price them out of the market. Think about it. That's the world of business. I know it's brutal, but that's the reality. Put yourself in the same situation and you will do the same thing. So visionary leadership is mandatory. It's what we're going to need to thrive. And you as a parent think that school and university and that, that old-fashioned system is prepping your kids. It is not. They are not. That visionary leadership is going to come from you. It's going to need to come from you. You are going to need to establish yourself, A, as a visionary. You're going to need to become a visionary. I don't care what your, your level of education is. I don't care 
what your level of comfort is with technology, with AI, with mobile. I don't care. It's not something that I'm, I'm giving you as a responsibility. Let me put it to you like this. You became a parent, now become a parent. Take that responsibility. Look after your child's present and look after her future. And the only way you're going to do that is to be a visionary yourself. To imagine, to stop and imagine what will my child's future look like? What will the world in which my child is growing up, the day when my child is my age, what will the world around me look like? Research it. Listen to talks. Watch videos. Watch my podcast because that's all I ever talk about. Visionary leadership. Transformative education. That's all I ever talk about. And formulate a picture for yourself of what my child's world is going to be like and how I as a parent am going to prepare him or her for that future, for that world. And if you can do that successfully... If you can do that, when you can do that, then your child is going to be a leader and not a follower in the future. And that's what's required. It's not just, and I want you to shed this, this idea that I'm going to send my child to, to school. He's going to get educated. I'm going to spend my life savings to put him through university. He's going to get educated. And education is everything. Oh my goodness gracious. Do you really think that? Do you really think that what you know is what's going to get you places? Do you really think that having that piece of paper, that degree is going to get him or her places? Do you think that's what's going to advance a career? Well, surprise, surprise. Today's degree is yesterday's metric. Every second person is going to have a degree. And then they're going to raise the, the bar to... To, to masters and then they're going to raise the bar to PhDs. That's what's happening in India. So if you've got a degree, you're just like, wow, wow, meh, you're an ordinary person. But you need a master's now. And then you, but it's still, it's, it's just running on, on, on the hamster wheel. It's just false ideas. Because still, between a degree, a master's, a PhD, it's what you know. But you don't progress you don't progress on what you know. You progress on what you do. Remember that. It's not what you know. It's what you do. It's what solutions you find for the world. It's what problems you solve. It's like Elon Musk said. I think he said this. You are paid in direct proportion to the size of the problems you solve. Oh yeah, you're learned. You got some facts in your head. What's the use of that? Ideas are nothing without implementation. If you cannot implement your ideas or if you are too lazy to implement your ideas, that's all they are. Nebulous ideas, meaningless ideas inside your head. But take that idea, put it into the real world. Build that app. Draw that picture. Build that idea that you have. Maybe a gizmo, a gadget and then present it to the world. Write that article, make that video, present it to the world. Now that idea manifests into reality. And now it has value. You see? Everybody has ideas. Everybody can have ideas. But very few people can implement on those ideas. Anybody can learn stuff. But to use that knowledge to create something that is a solution to the world's problems, that takes visionary leadership. So parents, please do not dupe yourself and your children into thinking that I'm going to get them educated, I'm going to send them to school, I'm going to send them to university and then they are going to be set. Delusional thinking. I'm so sorry to be so harsh with you. But I care. I care for what's going on in the world around us. Really, there's just so many terrible things that are happening. And your child has the capability to solve these problems. Your child is the visionary leader of the future that's going to guide people in the corporate or political sphere, NGO sector, environment, you name it. They will bring about social justice, but they need you to be a visionary and to guide them 
into becoming visionaries. Schools are not going to do it. Universities are clueless. It takes you. So what do you do as a parent? How do you become a visionary parent? Well, I already alluded to the first part. You need to upskill yourself. You need to become aware of what's happening in the world of technology. You need to be able to look at current trends and extrude from there and say, well, the future is going to be so and so. It might not be a perfect picture and nobody on this planet can give you a perfect picture of what's going to be happening in the future, what the future is going to look like, how is AI going to progress. Nobody can do that. But you do your best guess. Your most researched and informed guess that you can possibly make. First step. Self. Second step. It's now preparing your child for that future. Actively preparing your child. And this is where something very important comes to mind. Whenever I speak at conferences or events or communities, and if you want me to come and speak at your community, just cover my travel expenses. It's free. Not for corporates. Corporates, I have, I have my <laughs> rates. So whenever I speak at these events, parents come up to me and say, how do I keep my child safe from technology and AI? When a parent tells me that, the first thing that comes in my mind is, your child doesn't need safety from technology and AI, they need safety from you and your ignorance. Because it's not technology that is at fault. It's not AI that is at fault. Technology is there, it does what it does. But whether or not your child uses it for good and for progression and for advancement and for growth, it's up to you. And if you can't do that, then I don't want to insult anybody, but you know what I'm trying to say. We need to prepare our children for the world of the future. And technology is a completely integral part of the future. You can't protect them from technology. You have to leverage technology to prepare them for the world of the future. You see what I'm getting at here? I'm trying to change your perspective. They don't need protection from that. Yes, they need to be able to use technology safely and effectively so that it becomes a means of their growth rather than a means for them to be held back. You get what I'm saying? It's not protection they need. You know, it's like asking me, how do I protect my child from food? Because there are so many poisonous things out there. There are so many unhealthy foods out there. There are so many things my child can eat that are carcinogens. How can I protect my child from food? Do you ever think like that? We don't think like that. But we think, how can I give my child the most nutritious food, but help her to avoid the, the, the bad foods, the unhealthy foods, the poisonous, the carcinogens, the things that's going to clog her artery as she gets older. Those are the things I'm going to avoid and I'm going to give her good, wholesome, nutritious, organic food. And that's how our approach to technology needs to be as parents. Technology is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's all around us. Our children are not going to be able to avoid technology in the future, in their careers. You name the career. You name the career. And I will show you how technology is integrated into that career. Careers we never thought of in the past. In the past. Agriculture. Today, dairy cows are being fitted. I'm, one of my clients is a company that fits dairy cows with health devices. Farmers that are growing fruits and vegetables are putting sensors into the soil and those sensors feed into an AI system that, that tell the farmers that the health of their, of their farm, not the health of the crops, the health of the farm itself. And then there are sensors in the plants that talk about the health of the plants themselves, the growth rate, the nutrition level. It's incredible. This is agriculture, you name it. Agriculture, business, finance, uh, education, Everywhere you look, technology has infiltrated. It has changed. It has disrupted. There is no way that your children and my grandchildren are going to be able to say and content themselves with, hmm, I, don't, I think I'll just avoid technology. That's career suicide.
What was the point I was trying to make? The point I was trying to make, yes, is this. That the best thing we can do for our children is to teach them how to use technology in the correct way, responsibly. And not just give them the technology on one extreme and say, right, go with it, or plunk them in front of the television and let them watch hours and hours of Teletubbies. <laughs> do they still even watch Teletubbies anymore? I don't know. But you get what I'm trying to say. It's become a thing of convenience. You know, give the child the iPad or the phone or put her in front of the TV and she'll pass her time there, two, three-year-old child scrolling, watching YouTube. Mommy can go and have a nap. Mommy can go and relax. Mommy can shirk her responsibilities as a parent. Did I say that? Did I offend you? Sorry to offend. It's not my, mean, my aim to offend anyone. But what I'm saying is this, that sometimes we as parents... I know it's tiring. I know parenting is a tiring job. But sometimes we, can, we tend to be irresponsible. Rather than that, that's the one thing, you know, sort of give complete freedom. And then that privilege becomes a right, and then those children become feral. And so when we try to take it away from them, like, ah, they show their fangs, they want to get angry and upset at us, and we're too scared to do that. I've encountered parents like that. And on the other extreme, we've got the parents who are completely restrictive, Nothing, no technology, no internet, no device, nothing. When you get married, I'll give you. So now that's another problem because you are depriving your child and you are creating a little bit of, of distance between yourself and, and the child. You, you, what you are doing is, see, and I can tell you horror stories about this and I don't want to get into this, but... When you deprive your child of technology and they go and they encounter it somewhere else, they are going to feel like, like there's a jailbreak that just happened. And I experienced that. When my kids were young, I was very strict. I was one of those people who practiced restrictive parenting. They never went anywhere. They never had gadgets. We never had a TV in our home. We never had uh, a lot of things. But the moment they went to my parents or my brothers or my in-laws place for a holiday they would be glued to the television whatever gadgets and devices they could get gaming consoles they would stick to it for days and days on end till their eyes became almost square and when i looked at this i naturally i was very upset as a father but i started to to reflect and i thought to myself the reason this is happening is because my kids don't have that at home and because they don't have that at home, when they finally get hold of it, then they go wild. And I'm not always there to supervise this. And this is bad. And so I started shifting from restrictive parenting to what they call additive parenting. There's a term in psychology, additive parenting. Now, additive parenting is beautiful. And I'll tell you what that means by means of an example. One day I was talking to my uncle, old man. And he, the one thing about him, very humble, decent man, he passed away. And he's got three sons, just like me. And his sons are gems, absolutely fantastic human beings. I mean, really terrific guys, my cousins. So one day I said to my uncle, I said, uncle, give me some advice. I've got three sons, you've got three sons. How did you bring up such good boys? And he gave me an answer. He's an un, he was an uneducated, simple, humble man. And his answer was an answer that not, not the world's greatest psychologists can give you. He said, take them fishing. See, I, I, I take my boys fishing. So I was a bit disappointed that that's all he could tell me. But I went back and I started thinking about that. I take my boys fishing. What he meant by that is that I take them and I experience life with them. And I always have time for them. Whatever we do, we do as a family. That's what he was trying to tell me. And as a family, they have my time as a, as a parent. I give them all of my time and my priority. And they, in turn, give me their respect and their love. And that's how they were brought up 
to be really great people and achievers also. They're all doing well for themselves financially, they have good families, and they are basically achievers. I take them fishing. So what did I learn from this? I learned from this that additive parenting is far better than restrictive parenting because additive parenting enables you as a parent to enjoy life and enjoy experiences with your children and not to be afraid and close your mind off to experiences. And that creates stronger bonds. It creates love. It creates respect. Restrictive parenting, on the other hand, I'll tell you what it creates, resentment. Your children will resent the fact that you, you are restricting them when everybody else has all of these things. They will resent that you don't trust them. They will resent that you that 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 you are you are like you are behaving more like like a like a prison ward ward or warden I don't know prison warden than as a loving parent. That you are being paranoid. So additive parenting. Now the, the biggest one of the biggest aspects of additive parenting is behavioral change or what they call behavior transformation. It's like this. Child, and this worked for me. This worked for me as a parent. Child, instead of watching all those YouTube videos or watching those TikTok videos, why don't we do something constructive together with the same gadget? Like what? Coding. Coding is one of the best pastimes that a child can ever do. Because coding sharpens your mind. Coding teaches you how to think and how to express yourself. Because when you are talking to a computer, you have to be precise and concise. And that teaches you that when you are speaking with human beings, how to be precise and concise in your speech. You can't take anything for granted. Coding helps with maths, logical thinking, languages, crit critical thinking, creativity. It's a multivitamin of awesomeness. Robotics, somewhat related to coding, digital photography, video editing, for those whose personal values allow it, music creation, there are apps that do that, journaling, writing, language learning, oh my god, I saw a video recently of a young Turkish girl who could speak 11 languages fluently, she's about 22 years old, at 22 she can speak 11 languages fluently. And today there are apps for all of that. Even learning. Learning and writing down what you learned. Taking notes. There's a, there's a note-taking methodology called Zettelkasten. A German philosopher came up with it. Teach your children that. Teach them how to learn and how to convert that learning into notes which you can share. Teach them how to write, how to blog, how to use AI for all of that. It's incredible the number of things you can do. And that's just in the digital space. But additive parenting goes beyond that too, right? It's not just about digital. Teach them the value of balance by showing them the value of balance. If you are not a balanced individual, they're not going to be a balanced individual. Take time out to go and enjoy the beautiful outdoors. Go to the beach. Take them fishing. Take them on a trail. Heck, Take them on a trail with their little digital cameras and devices and do nature photography. And then come back home and try to identify what species of plant or flower this is. As, as long as we're not making excuses, as long as we're not making excuses, there's a world of opportunity out there for parents to engage in positive parenting with their kids. But as long as we continue to make excuses about how there's no time, about how it's, it's too hard, about how I'm tired and how it's so nice to just plop them in front of the device, then they are going to, they, we, we are hurting no one but our kids. So positive parenting. This is what is going to help us to produce visionary leaders of the future. Visionary, visionary leaders of the future. And it's such a fun way to do it. Just having fun 
with our kids, building those relationships, building those bonds. And if you're doing things like coding together, language learning together, then you are growing yourself also. We need visionary leaders. And it's up to you parents to produce visionary leaders in your homes. Make them aware of what's going on in the world around us. School is not doing that. Look at the political situation. Look at the oppression in the Middle East. Look at the hunger in Africa. Look at the instability in so many places. Look at global warming. Look at the number of species that are becoming extinct. Are our children aware of all these horrible things that are happening all over, all around us? Are we making them aware of those things? Are we sitting down, listening, or reading, to, uh, reading the news, analyzing, discussing? Are you challenging them to come up with solutions to these problems? Look at the world of business, such an exciting space to be. Are you preparing your children to be entrepreneurial in their thinking? Because those are the people who are going to survive and thrive in the future. Visionary leaders with an entrepreneurial mindset. Whether they are, they, they are going to start their own businesses or they're working for a company, that is what companies are looking for. That is what I look for as an entrepreneur. People who are entrepreneurial in their thinking. If you look at my team, they are all, every single one of them is entrepreneurial. Why? Because those who were not entrepreneurial, who were not visionary, they were, they were fired. So in conclusion, I like saying that. Give your children the most valuable thing you could ever give them. Your time, your presence, your love and experiences with you as a parent. You will never go wrong with that.